In this video, we're going to take a look at our remaining sub-object modes in Edit Guides, which are going to be Strand and Root. Uh, first, let's take a look at the Strand sub-object mode, which is a great sub-object mode in order to get finer detail out of your grooming. So if I just turn off Show End Result and zoom in a little bit, we can see that we kind of have these little uh, vertex ticks here at the edge. And uh, let me just bring this down a little bit. Grab my Move tool. And you can select these and you can move and you can adjust them. So if you have some guides that are misbehaving or you need to place, you know, very, very um, precisely, you can go in and you can adjust them. And these behave in a, in a really great and intuitive way. As I kind of click and drag them, you can see that they move kind of in this uh, fluid spline IK way. And that's uh, really the truth of it is that they are uh, set up with spline IK as you move them and this allows you to kind of position them and you get really used to you know that I might kind of go this way to make a wave and then back here in order to kind of uh, get the type of look that I would want out of the hair in my positioning. So this gives you a great ability to uh, you know just position a couple of these and move them to where you need them to be uh, and adjust them the way that you would want them to be. So kind of move that there like so. If I want to grab all these guys I can do so and I can kind of move them together. Uh, another thing that you can do is you can use all of your, uh, well you can use the scale tools as well uh, to scale these things together. So a lot of times if you're making clumps or you want to push some hairs away you can kind of scale these together or away from each other which works out pretty well. You have a little bit more control on these down at the bottom here in the uh, strand IK solver in the way that they perform. First you can check whether you want to use strand IK or not and if you don't you can get them to kind of move a little bit more um, as a clump. Uh, so this might be what you would expect if you were to kind of come in here and move them. Um, but you know that can definitely be a useful uh, a useful way to move these uh, and it can be a little bit more predictable in some ways. Uh, and you can also choose the, whether you want history dependent or independent IK. Down here in the control point section uh, you have uh, even a little bit more control which uh, I really like to use quite a bit. First is how much uh, this these control points kind of influence uh, of the hair. So if I kind of go in uh, you can see that um, you know it's adjusting the IK is affecting kind of just the end points here um, when you adjust that influence there. Usually I'll probably leave that at that high value of one so it kind of does the entire piece. The next piece or actually the top piece here is the position uh, which is really useful I feel uh, because you can grab a bunch of these guys and of course you know you can affect them at the end point which is great uh, so you may take these and kind of move them like so but then after you have them selected you can kind of move that position um, down the strand so you can kind of move that more towards the middle or the base of the root and now you can affect you know that portion of the hair so this is a good way to um, you know, adjust or, or make things like buns or uh, things that would need curves uh, in them that are very, very specific and just give you a little bit more control over where uh, you can adjust those guides. So you can kind of put those in there. So by using these kind of position points, you can kind of move that along. If I scroll up onto the uh, strand operators, you can see there's a place to uh, import splines. There's a braiding tool. Um, and a few other parameters here including this push away from mesh which is pretty useful um, if you have these and you have you know some hairs that are kind of stuck inside a mesh like this uh, you can use this push away from mesh option and it will get them outside of the surface um, which is is good for kind of debugging if you have any problems uh, with uh, those guys you can just kind of select them all and push them away and there's also an auto mode so that if you're combing or adjusting um, you can kind of work with those. Uh, another nice feature that's in here is this adopt from stack option which will kind of pull down any edits that you might do in the stack. I'll give you a quick example of that here. If I go in and uh, I'll just turn off this piece but I wanted to use any other um, interesting max modifier on these hairs so let's just go and grab a twist. Ornatrix is set up to be you know based on Max, uh, you know, very heavily, so it can make use of, you know, a, a lot of the different modifiers, morphers, all sorts of other things like that. Um, so, you know, for instance, I wanted to twist these guys in here. 
um, you can actually bring that into the guides by choosing a DAW from stack. And people who have maybe used the cloth modifier on Max will be used to something like this. So I can select all these guys. And I can say adopt from stack. And there you go, they kind of uh, grab those uh, that stuff with the twist. Uh, I'll just kind of deselect and you can see, we'll just turn that twist off. And those guys have kind of adopted their shape from the stack, which is pretty interesting. So uh, that's one little feature there. The next sub-object mode I'd like to look at is the roots. And if we go into the roots, <clears throat> I'll turn the guides back on so we can kind of select them here. Um, you have uh, some different uh, things to edit, like the interpolation. Um, you can set uh, root, channel, root channel groups, um, which we'll be looking at in a little bit. And uh, this channel manager allows you to break them up into, uh, into channels as well, uh, kind of like smoothing groups, uh, where you can apply different things to a different channel. Um, the uh, other thing that's in here, or but kind of the major thing that I wanted to look at, was the plant and the remove. So of course I can go into any one of these roots or a bunch of these and just say, you know, these were generated, but for whatever reason I don't want them, so I'm going to just remove these roots. So a little bit of um, ability to kind of adjust that, and then uh, after if I, you know, had a particular area, which happens, uh, you know fairly often that I needed more guides in because I wanted more detail, uh, I can go in and just plant roots, which I find really, really um, beneficial. If I just kind of click here, you can see I can click and add roots. And as I add them, you'll see that basically they look at their surroundings and they uh, adopt the shape of um, the roots and strands that are around them. So you can I, I can see a little bare spot here and I can add in some roots there and you can see that we get uh, a bunch of different um, guides there that are, um, you know, just quickly in the general shape of the roots that are around them, which is pretty helpful. So that's a general overview of these kind of uh, brush tools. Certainly there are a few more, uh, you know, parameters and more in-depth things like the channels that we'll look at a little bit later, but I just wanted to kind of give us a, a quick start on uh, these things that we find in edit guides in order to style our hair.